Good day, students. Welcome to this session. This is session six, titled The Normative and the Empirical. But this is the first part. In this session, we would like to uh, discuss um, a few things about sentences. And uh, you know, in terms of value judgments and factual sentences, and, or if you like, normative sentences and factual sentences. But by the end of this lecture, uh, you will understand the difference between the two. I mean, factual and value judgments, and uh, factual sentences and value judgments, and then um, understand that. Uh, a sentence could be both uh, as well. Uh, this is uh, the, the real deal. All right, in discussing this, I will start with the contrast or distinction between facts and values. Um, this is not the first time we are talking about facts or factual sentences. In the first unit, we mentioned this mentioned a factual sentence as one of the types of declarative sentence. And we said that if a sentence is factual, um, it should be something that we can empirically find out whether uh, it is true or false. We have to be able to, you know, verify. And examples, you know, that the we can say something like, this chair is uh, black in color. We can also say that there are 10 cars parked in front of this building, or that um, the boy is taller than the girl, or this boy is taller than that girl. Whatever these things mean, if we want to find out empirical, we should be able to do that. So they are all examples of factual sentence. And then there is what we call a va value judgment. This is also not new. Value judgments, we have already said, um, are um, normative. I mean, what we mean by no normative is that they describe the world as it ought to be, telling us what is good, what is bad, as we did in the past. So if I say that, um, uh, being charitable is good, um, stealing is bad, etc. Et These are value judgments. But we also said that value judgments, or if you like, normative sentences, could be moral and non moral. Some value judgments are moral, others are non moral. So all the ones that relate to morality are the ones that I just said. And we could as well use or judge how good or bad something is by not referring to morality at all. Such as when we say that um, Toyota is a good car. We are not saying that Toyota is a moral being. Um, this is the difference between the two. But what we have to note about this topic is that because these things are not new, what is new here is the new names that have been introduced in this course. Uh, at this session. So um, factual sentences have now been called the empirical, and value judgments have now been called the normative. So that's what all the topic is talking about, but nothing is essentially new. So if we want to write more examples of this, what we need to do is to bear in mind that factual sentences should be things that we can empirical, empirically find out whether they are there or not. And normative sentences are not necessarily empirical, but what they mean is that they are describing the world as it ought to be, saying what someone or something ought to be. All right, that's all I mean. You may find further examples also in the um, reader. But we can move on to um, topic two, which is telling the explicit and implicit meaning of meanings of statements. 
what are we trying to achieve here? You know, some sentences will appear to us explicitly as factual sentences. You listen to them, and it's as if they are uh, informing us of things that we can actually find out in the empirical world. So if you are not careful, you think that they are explicitly um, empirical, and that's it. But this course, as we note, is a critical thinking course. It is meant for us to develop the skill of you know, uh, identifying what is hidden. So if you are intelligent, you just don't take things at the face value, but then you are able to go beyond them to also uncover their hidden meanings. Therefore, a sentence may be explicitly factual, but implicitly a value judgment. How is this possible? Initially, we were saying there was a difference between the two. Now we are saying a sentence could be both at the same time. How does this happen? We will give examples. If I take um, Asamwajan, he is the um, current captain of the senior football team of Ghana. Uh, the, the, that team is called the Black Stars. And Asamwajan, if I say of him, Asamwajan is a successful man. Am I saying something we can empirically find out? Of course, yes. But behind this, I am also suggesting that Asamwajan has achieved or done something good. A successful man has done something good or has achieved something that is good. And because of this latter aspect, we can see that it also has some um, uh, value judgment. So it means that this sentence is both empirical and normative. It is a factual sentence and at the same time a value judgment. You, you may find several examples of this in the reader and in the uh, slides as well. And uh, I think that we should end this session here because that's, that's indeed the end of it. And we are particularly helped by the fact that a number of things that we have discussed today have been discussed in the past. So not everything is new. I hope that you do understand me. Thank you.